All right, in this video, I'm going to show you a different type of background scroll animation. And we have this flower here, and I got this request from a user a while back. What she wanted was somewhat of a flower that would sway as she scrolled from screen to screen. Now, I say it's a different type of background scroll animation, not just because of the animation itself, but because we're going to use a formula to animate this. That way we can incorporate some delays. This setup here is a three screen setup and you'll see why I mentioned three screen setup here. You could adjust this for a four or five screen, but for this one, it's a three screen setup. So since she wanted a flower, what I did in Affinity Designer is I created a flower and it's made up of seven separate images that we're going to import into KOWP as vectors. That way we don't lose any resolution. And slice seven that you see here is the back of the flower. Then we have six, five, four, three, two, and then the front is one. If you want to check out this preset, you can get it for free from my free presets folder. Just look for 3D flower and make sure you have a three screen setup. Those seven images are all global images, so you should be able to load this right up. But we have seven, six, five, four, three, two, one with seven being the back and one being the front. Now we can alter this animation as well. If I bump the speed on up, let's say I bump it up to 130, it's gonna pretty much shoot that flower all the way off the screen. Now if I bump that speed down, we can see about where it will be somewhat on the screen, somewhat off the screen. And I can slide that back as well. Now with that in mind, the delay. Now I know typically in custom with time, when we have 10 that represents one second, that is not necessarily the case here with the delay. Just keep that in mind. But the delay, if we bump this up, we can determine how long it's gonna take for each layer of this flower to move. So with a higher delay, it's gonna take longer for each piece to move over. And as you can see, that does change the animation quite a bit. I'm gonna bump my speed on down. I'm gonna take the duration and bump it down as well. And what the duration will do is how long it takes each piece itself to complete its animation once it starts. So with a low duration of five, this five does represent five tenths of a second, which is half a second. Now we're gonna have a snap and taking that delay on down to maybe around seven. You know, as you can see, you can definitely alter the way this thing looks. Bumping the duration down even more, it's gonna be even more snappier, I guess you could say. But uh, yeah, I mean, you could do this not just with a flower, obviously, you could use shapes. But with all those globals, let me show you how this is set up inside of items. Just go ahead and add one image inside of items, and that's going to be number seven. Take a wild guess. That is this back layer that we have right here, the back piece of that flower. Remember how I had it called slice seven? It is the global image seven. Since it is a vector, I have it set to vector SVG. Position it wherever you would like. And then for animation, we do have a scroll, but we have it set to react on a formula. And that formula is the following. If SI screen is not equal to two, animate it forward. If it is equal to two, bring it back. So hopefully your device is supported to determine the current screen that you are on. And then notice I do have a three screen setup here. But basically screen two is the center screen. And since I have a three screen setup, I'm either gonna be on screen one, screen two, or screen three. That's what would determine whether we animate forward or kind of go back to the default look where everything's centered on the screen. I have the action set to scroll, the E set to overshoot, the duration, GV dir, the speed, GV speed. I'll come back to the angle in a moment. The delay, GV delay divided by 10 times seven. Basically, I decided to put divide by 10 here. That way you could fine tune that number global delay. If we take away the divide by 10, you kind of lose some of them fine points of tenths of a second and things like that. You could take it away or we can just leave it the way it is. Take whatever that delay is, divide it by 10 and multiply it by seven. Now, why am I multiplying it by seven? Because this is the last layer of my flower that I want to animate. In a moment when I show you six and all of the other layers, we will come in here and change just this number. And that's all we'll have to do to get that delay effect. And then lastly, the angle here, 
if SI screen is equal to one, that means we've scrolled over to screen one, we want this angle to go to zero degrees. If we're on screen three, we want our angle to be 180. You can flip flop the zero and the 180 here if you would like to get a different movement. Instead of moving left, it'll move right and vice versa. Now, when we're on screen two, screen two is just when we're gonna go back to that default look where everything is centered. And once you have all that set up, take that image, image seven, copy it and paste it, and that's what I've done right here to get six. Make sure you change your global image to six. Go to your animation, leave all of this stuff the same since you copied and pasted, except for the delay. Multiply it by six. So take a wild guess if I came back to image one, image one, if I go to its animation, but animation, scroll, all of this stuff is still the same. The only thing I'm changing is that multiplier there. So since this is the first image, we're multiplying by one. You don't even really need that there, but hopefully you do see the pattern. And with these images too, uh, this flower or whatever image you decide to use with these delays, uh, we can come into that vector, go to its filter, and we can apply filters to it as well. So now our back one has a black and white filter applied to it. And applying that to all the others, you can get a totally different look. The main thing I wanted to discuss here was a different way of working with BG scroll. Uh, we're actually using a formula to get our scrolling effect. And there you have it, a 3D or somewhat three-dimensional scrolling flower for your custom live wallpaper. Again, that animation there looks quite a bit different than it did at the beginning because of all of those number globals that we could tweak. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.